Daily Bible Time, Dominic Steele. Thursday morning, traditionally called Maundy Thursday. Good Friday is tomorrow. At Village tomorrow morning, we're marking Good Friday, marking the death of Jesus. We'd love you to join us. 9.30 a.m. for church. I'll be speaking on the meaning of the death of Christ from Mark's Gospel. Friday night, we're doing creative reflections on the death of Jesus at 6 p.m. And then Sunday, 9.30 and 6, we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And we'd love to see you. Now, we come today and we're wrapping up Mark's Mark's Gospel and our treatment of Mark's Gospel today, we come today to what is called the longer ending of Mark. Now, I'm dealing with this today, not because I think it's in the Bible, not because I think it's Holy Scripture, not because I think it's the revealed Word of God, but because it's text that's printed in some Bibles that does need some explanation and discussion. Now, you'll remember the last few days in the first verses of Mark 16, Mark 16, 1 to 8, we've been canvassing the resurrection of Jesus and The text actually finished, to be honest, a little abruptly with the statement in verse 8 that the woman ran, astonished, fleeing, frightened, saying nothing to no one. And and that is how the earliest manuscripts of Mark's Gospel finish. Um, But the note in my Christian Standard Bible reads, some of the earliest manuscripts conclude with chapter 16, verse 8, and then following that is printed another bit of text in brackets, Mark 16, 9 to 20. It's headed the longer ending of Mark, appearances of the risen Lord. I'll just read it to you and then I'll discuss it. Early on the first day of the week after he'd risen, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, one of whom he'd driven seven demons out of. She went and reported to those who had been with him as they were mourning and weeping. Yet when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe it. After this, he appeared in different form to two of them, walking on their way into the country, and they went and reported to the rest who didn't believe them either. Later, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who saw him after he'd risen. Then he said to them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they'll drive out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll pick up snakes. If they should drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll get well. Uh, So the Lord Jesus, after speaking to them, was taken up into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. They went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by accompanying sign. Now, The commentator on Mark's Gospel, William Lane, who we've been following closely, doesn't even discuss these verses in the main section of his commentary. There's an additional note later called Notes on the Supplementary Endings for the Gospel, and he states in that section a few paragraphs explaining why this section isn't genuine, as does the commentator Edwards. Edwards' opening line for this section, he says, It is virtually certain that Mark 16, 9 to 20 is a later edition and not the original ending of the Gospel of Mark. Now, how does this all work? Well, the actual words written on the original papyrus by Mark from all those years ago, those words don't survive. So we depend on copies, and there were lots of copies of the Gospels made. And the copies date from the earliest copies are AD 135 all the way through to AD 1,200. And when we say lots of copies, there are more than 5,000 copies made. They range in size from postage stamp scraps to complete manuscripts of the Bible. And in general, the copies show remarkable agreement. And so you read all the copies and you think, oh wow, these guys have done a really good job of copying out the New Testament. And It just confirms my trust in the scriptures. The biggest exception to this happy rule is the ending of Mark's gospel. Um, The two oldest and most important manuscripts of the Bible, one called Codex Vaticanus and Codex Synacticus, they omit Mark 16, 9 to 20. Neither Clement of Alexandria nor Origen show, the two leading commentators of the early centuries, show any awareness of the existence of this longer ending. Eusebius and Jerome, writing a little later, write, they write that verses 9 to 20 were absent from the majority of the Greek copies known to them. So bottom line, people have concluded that someone at some time who thought the verse 8 ending was a bit abrupt, too harsh, they added this extra bit. 
Um, there's also all sorts of odd stylistic points in these verses that don't fit the overall direction of Mark. So Edwards, the commentator, describes these verses an, as an early Christian resurrection mosaic. Some parts of it look like they're ideas that have been lifted from Luke and Matthew. And you think, oh, well, if he's lifted ideas from Luke and Matthew, you can't do much damage. You might just think they're just not genuine. But other ideas here are superstitions not worthy of genuine Christian faith. So, I mean, you look at this line in verse 17. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they'll drive out demons. They'll speak in tongues. New tongues. They'll pick up snakes. If they should drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll get well. Now, there is no account of drinking poison with immunity in the genuine parts of the New Testament. And it's not something a believer in the genuine gospel of God would claim. It's not promised. It's not required of, as part of Christian belief. And similarly, the line about picking up snakes with hands, that's not promised, not to be expected by the scriptures. So... Um, that's the explanation for this longer part of Mark 16. I don't think it's genuinely part of the gospel. Um, I don't think you should base any belief on this section as opposed to the earlier part of Mark 16, which I do think is the hand of Mark and is to be believed, trusted and honoured and listened to. I'll say a little bit more in my sermon on Sunday morning and uh, I'll look forward to your company um, for that then. Uh, we'll take Monday off for the public holiday Monday and we'll be back on Tuesday morning for daily Bible time and we'll begin to look at the book of Galatians by the Apostle Paul. See you then.